You guys, I've got a bit of a problem. I've been slowing down. I have not been getting as many models painted as I usually do. I've spread myself way too thin. I'm working on way too many games at the same time. So there's only one reasonable and responsible thing I can do to fix this. I'm gonna paint a whole army today. I want to try out a new game, a little game you might have heard of called One Page Rules. And a little something about me, I don't dip my toes in the games. I go in hard. I have two full armies here that need painting and only two days to get them painted in if I want to be gaming this weekend. I have about nine hours left of today to get this entire army painted up and it's gonna be beyond speed painting. It's gonna be light speed painting. I'm gonna to need to use every single trick I know to get these guys finished. Step one, primer. Oh, this is gonna be impossible. This army is the Horde faction made up of a bunch of sub-factions, like the Covenant from Halo or what Games Workshop keeps telling us the tower's supposed to be like. It's a ragtag group of rebels, pirates, and a hodgepodge of robots. I need to work as quickly as I can and I was thinking of taking these guys outside and rattle canning them. But they're so small and detailed, I was worried I wouldn't be able to get in every nook and cranny. So a super wet blasting of black primer through the airbrush took a little bit longer, but made sure everything was painted. Typically, I would now throw on a Zenithal highlight, but I got like full remodels in front of me and not that much time to do them in, so I'm just gonna start slapping on base coats. There's kind of like three color schemes going on in this force, so I just gotta get started. I sprayed gray paint over the nights because the color I want them to be is purple. And the purple paint that I own is terrible. It doesn't cover at all. But with the undercoating, it came out fine. Now I'm sort of setting myself up for some slap chop, but I don't have time for even that. With slap chop, everything has to get slapped and chopped, meaning everything has to be touched with the brush. What I'm doing is more of a hybrid, spraying on purple and picking out just a few elements on these guys. Red capes, pea soup colored heads, brown pouches, blue guns. And I'm only doing one coat each. Now it looks a little hokey, a little unfinished, but a big black wash will clean it all up, or rather hide the crimes. And within that black wash, while it was still wet, I added on some burnt umber and Indian yellow inks. These mixed in sneakily add a little more subtle color and interest, even though they were randomly slapped on. After the wash dried, I got a little fancy and painted the balls red. I don't really have time for this, but I wanted to. Ooh, I'm really liking how these guys turned out. Purple is a color I don't use nearly enough. Now, I should call these guys done. I really should. These guys took so long. It took like over five hours. Really eaten into my time. But those hex shields. The reason I wanted these guys is the hex shields. And I gotta do something fun on there. I took some white paint and thinned it down with some water and flow aid so it would flow right into the cracks. And it sort of didn't work. I mean, it worked, but it took eight coats of paint before the lines were nice and crisp. And by then, basically the whole front of the shields were white. I went in with a magenta paint and picked out all the hexes. I'm using magenta for a very specific reason, and that is what happens to it when yellow is glazed over top. It turns into a very vibrant and saturated red-orange. And of course, more balls. These capes were also looking a little sad, so some red stippling made them look like they were painted with a little bit more purpose. These guys took six and a half hours. That's way, way, way too long, but they look so good. These guys are my absolute favorites. I'm fine spending a little extra time on them, but now I've really got to start racing through these models. Next up, the Raiders. These guys don't need to be clean and nice like the Knights, so I spray each one with two spots of purple and two spots of brown to make them look messy and unkempt. Then a dry brushing a tan. These models are so detail rich that a dry brushing does most of the work for me. And then it was time for cherry picking some details. On these guys and gals, white hoods, it always works to paint the head a different color, red ponytails, and a silver dry brushing on the weapons. Then it was time for the all important black wash. To get these guys from primer to here has taken one hour, eight minutes, 19 seconds, and 47 milliseconds. Oh, now this product is actually feeling possible again. I'm gonna dish out some finishing touches and special effects, and then these will be complete. I quickly airbrushed white paint onto all the swords. No two thin coats here, just one fast squirt. I used aluminum foil as a shield to protect the minis, and then I took some screen door mesh and held it over the swords and I airbrushed magenta through it, creating a square grid gradient. This was super fast and looks super good and I can make it even better. Yellow contrast paint over top. Now these are glowing molten sci-fi swords. Now the snipers also have a hex pattern I want to outline, but I learned my lesson on the hex shields. This isn't a job for acrylic paints. I glass coated the models and then broke out the oil paint. I rubbed this into the hex pattern and then I rubbed it clean with a makeup sponge and it gave me exactly the effect I wanted in just a few minutes. Even though there's other things I would like to paint on these guys, the special effects kind of make them feel finished. They still feel like nice poppy models. 
Getting those special effects on there took about another hour and I grossly underestimated how long about 40 miniatures would take to paint. So I'm just gonna work on these robots until I can no longer keep my eyes open and then I'm gonna go to bed. I got 10 soldier drones, five wheelie drones and three walker drones and I wanna give them a nice rusty look. It's really late and I am painting at maximum speed now. I blasted every model brown from top to bottom and then I started stippling and dry brushing. First with a bright orange to start the rust effect and then a tan to add brightness and detail. It was getting so late I was losing a little coordination. On the soldier drones, I painted their guns a light blue. I did this very messily and then sponged on some of the original brown on top to make it look like there was very weathered paint that was peeling away. Over everything, I dry brushed silver and I picked out the face of the robots with a little bit of silver too. I liked how this looked and I decided to paint the donut shaped heads of the walker drones the same way and all the eyes got red paint. All right, that is 18 robots all completed. I technically got this army finished in one day. The bases aren't done, but I'm gonna do the bases when both armies are complete. And to get all of that stuff finished tomorrow, cause right now I'm going to bed. I finished 44 miniatures and I feel really proud of that. One thing that often stands between me and trying new games is that I'm a purist. I need to experience a game how it was meant to be played, with painted models. I'm 50% closer to trying out one page rules, having the Steel Spectres finished, and all these models are from today's sponsor. Demo Games and Art of the Genre are launching a new crowdfunding campaign, Revenants Run, a one page rules compatible series of sci-fi miniatures. This campaign is jam packed full of tabletop miniatures that can be purchased as either customizable STL files for your 3D printer or as high quality physical miniatures. And speaking of those miniatures, I am painting many of them for my armies, but that is still only a fraction of the models on offer for the two factions of this project, the Knights of the Quantum Accord and the Rebels of the Steel Spectres, which include models such as the winged jump pack warriors, gun toting robots, brutish armor knights, and insect like flying machines. Not only are these miniatures a perfect fit to proxy into your favorite tabletop war games, but they also have rules for use in One Page Rules Grimdark Future Sci Fi Battle Game, featuring beautiful data cards with fantastic artwork and all the stats and information you need to use them in game. To call this campaign jam packed would be an understatement. It is in pre campaign right now, you can follow the link below to check it out and read through the lore of the two warring factions. I had a great time pinning up the Steel Spectres, and tomorrow it'll be the Knights of the Quantum Accords turn. I had a good night's sleep, I'm all caffeinated, and I'm ready to start army number two. This one is much, much smaller, but it has much bigger units. These guys are the heavily armed and armored elite faction. They are tough as nails, but get to take less than a third as many models as the Horde army. For these guys, I want them all uniform. They are a proper organized military, so they should look more put together. I use my airbrush to spray everyone a dark green, then a light lime green from above to get some simple highlights. Just like I did on the Steel Spectres, I want to do as many big easy steps as possible. I don't have time for anything else. I airbrush the shields and the bikes with a brown color in preparation for yellow. On the walkers, I use some painter's tape and aluminum foil to get a nice half and half thing going. The airbrush is letting me speed through these guys. I haven't touched a paintbrush yet and they feel like they're coming along nicely. Well, the look I was going for was Doom Guy, but I think with the colors I've picked, what I've ended up with is a little bit more... Oh, go pack out air guy. Yep, these guys are Green Bay Packers. It looks a little bit ridiculous, but it's all part of the plan. I'm gonna add as much detail as I possibly can through base coating and dry brushing. And then after that, a big old wash to bring it all together. I made myself a stripe template out of some painter's tape and used this to airbrush a red stripe over all the shields. There is a lot of decoration, so I can't get a good seal going, so it's important to only spray from the direct front of the stencil, so there's no overspray. I also base coated the helmets of all the close combat units white, and I gave all the weapons a coat of gunmetal. Now for some dry brushing. I don't often dry brush my models. With dry brushing, you give up just a little bit of control over the final result. But if it's a matter of speed, dry brushing gives great results in an incredibly short amount of time. I dry brushed a white paint over the yellow details and a light green paint over their bodies. Now they are looking much more like Doom Guy and much less like my neighbors. I am losing daylight fast. These guys have taken a long time, but they're so close to being done. And I think a black wash is gonna be the magic trick that blends everything together and makes them perfect. Then all that'll be left is the bases and I'll have two new armies for a new game. Nothing is more magical than a black wash. It fills in imperfections, it black lines everything, it adds a level of dirt and grime. It is perfection. No other painting tool can match its usefulness. It adds that grim dark aesthetic to everything it touches. 
And speaking of touching, it's time for some finishing touches. I sponged on some paint chips with a bright silver and a small piece of foam, and I airbrushed some red over the eyes of the knights. 19 miniatures, all done, tournament ready. Are there tournaments for one page rules? I don't even know, but now is the agonizing question, what color for the bases? Now, my instincts tell me a sandy desert wasteland, but actually both of these armies are very dark in color. And so I think a nice light base would look best. And I think I might do something crazy. I'm gonna go with the blue. I put some blue paint into my airbrush and darkened and desaturated it with some dark gray. And I sprayed this all over the bases. All these bases have overspray, mistakes, and paint splatter on them. So this step will make them all neat and tidy again. Then I gave each base a black wash to darken them. And then I dry brushed a blue over the bases, picking out all the details. Then it was time for some snow, a healthy scoop of army painter snow mixed with gloss medium. I put this toothpaste-like material over the bases, making clumps and then spreading them out thin over other areas. This stuff sets up pretty quick, which is good because there's one more step left. The snow right now looks a little bit too good. It's too crisp and perfectly white. The models have a fictional look to them. They're not realistic. And so I wanna make the snow slightly unrealistic as well. I airbrushed some super thin down blue over the snow and this made it darker and colder looking. It gave me exactly the look I was after. Oh, two full days of painting. And was it worth it? Absolutely, because I finished 63 miniatures, but man, am I feeling a little burnt out. <laughs> but I now have two completed armies for one page rules, a game that I have been dying to try and you all have been suggesting over and 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 over again. I definitely let myself try a little bit harder on the Steel Spectres. I really, really like these guys. And I kind of rushed the Knights of the Quantum Accord. To be fair, I also had to condense all of the basing into the Knight's Day as well. I don't prefer to rush painting, but I do really like gaming. And sometimes one of those things just has to win out. If you want to check out any of these amazing miniatures for yourself, you can find the pre-campaign for Revenant's Run over on GameFound. And if you like us and you want to support us, the best way to do so is over on Patreon. Our Patreon is loaded with perks. Now that I have two full armies for one page rules, I'm gonna get tons and tons and tons of games in, and then I'm gonna play tons and tons and tons of games of Warhammer 40,000 and do a little comparing and contrasting to see which war game is the one to rule them all. Look forward to that video. I'm gonna take a nap and then play some one page rules.